This week on Maker Update, an autonomous beach roving art bot, Kickstarter wants your ideas, a project that makes kits for other projects, GUIs for Raspberry Pi, stipple ceramics, and I'll show you why digital calipers are cool. It's Wednesday, April 26th. I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another Maker Update. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, this week, Jordan Bunker and I made some serious progress on our Power Wheels racer for Maker Fair Bay Area. We got the Nissan Leaf battery packs bolted down and wired up and we're officially rolling. We don't have brakes on it yet, so that's why we're not going so fast here, but it's getting there. I still really need your help not going broke on this though, so I've added a new $15 perk on our Indiegogo campaign. And for those of you getting stickers, here's the finished design from Josh Ellingson. And I'll be sending these out to get printed this week. There are only two weeks left for fundraising, so please consider sending a few bucks my way. I'll leave a link to the Indiegogo campaign in the show notes and at the end of this video. Also, for anyone in the Bay Area who wants to be part of my pit crew for Maker Fair Bay Area, email me. I'm donald at makerprojectlab.com. I need to start assembling my team. Now on with the show. This week, one of the coolest projects I came across is the Pablo Odysseus by a French maker named Ulysses. It's an autonomous beach rover that draws designs in the sand. It uses extruded aluminum framing, wheelchair motors, a 12 volt battery, a handful of Arduinos, and a laptop that's enclosed in a metal suitcase. A GPS breakout board tells the robot its position, which it references against the design that's set in the computer. It is no small robotics project, and there are definitely elements here that are way beyond my comfort level, but I also feel like as someone who is lucky enough to live near a beach, I need some kind of beach robot project to sink my teeth into. It could be a strand beast, I thought about that, but you know, a beach art bot would be even cooler. Ulysses has all of his Arduino code files over on Hackaday along with detailed photos and a nice logic chart that demonstrates what elements handle what. There's also a SketchUp file for a view of how the aluminum struts all go together. It's really well done. And now for news. This past week, Kickstarter announced their first request for projects. This to me is a real push from Kickstarter to reach out to makers who have great ideas for projects, but are unsure of what next steps to take to make it real. They're specifically looking for projects that are either tools for creating or projects for scientific exploration or projects with inventive design. I feel like that covers most of the things I love featuring on this show. So if you have a project like that, or even just an idea or a sketch, Kickstarter has a little web form for you to get in contact and someone from their team might reach out and help you work out what the next steps will be. If you have a cool idea, it's worth a shot. And now for one more project that blew me away this week, check out this parts sorting machine by Ryan Bates. I was reluctant to include this because Ryan doesn't have an official write up on it yet, but he does have a great thorough video explaining how it all works. The system uses an Arduino, some stepper motors, laser cut wood, and a little photo interrupter on the chute that counts the nuts and bolts as they fall down into the little cups. He uses this system to help count components for the arcade kits that he makes and sells. I love that he's got his own little mini factory technology helping him with his own home business. While I was on Ryan's site, retrobuiltgames.com, I also found a bunch of other fun projects that he has on there, including a DIY vending machine, a DIY claw machine, and an Arduino clock. Definitely all worth a look. It's time once again for a one minute review of a great tool that I found through the Cool Tools podcast and blog. I'm gonna show you this week how much fun you can have with a dirt cheap $13 pair of digital calipers. These come in a plastic case, mine even had an extra battery included. And on the front here, you have a power button, a zero button to zero out the measurement, and a toggle between inches and millimeters. There are four ways to measure. You have outside dimension, inside dimension, depth, and step. One main reason to use calipers is because it's so much more precise than using a ruler, especially when you're measuring something small. They're also great for when you wanna measure the difference between two things by measuring something, zeroing it out, and measuring the second thing, which gives you the difference. They're a crazy value at $13, and if you ever wanna get into 3D modeling parts that will interface with the real world, these are a must. 
These same calipers were recommended by John Park of Adafruit in Cool Tools podcast number 28. And it's recommendations like that that make me such a huge fan of the Cool Tools blog and the Cool Tools podcast. I have an Amazon link for these in the show notes here. And by using that link, you help to support this show and Cool Tools. So buy them for yourself, your friend, your kid. The world's just a cooler, more quantifiable place when you have digital calipers. A few other quick tips to share with you this week over on raspberrypi.org. They have a new guide on creating graphic user interfaces for your projects using Python. It's an approachable guide that's light on code. On Evil Mad Scientist, I saw this project from Hex Ceramic using laser engraved wood as a template for embossing designs into ceramic. To get the stipple effect of the photo into the wood, they used a free software tool from Evil Mad Scientist called StippleGen that generates STL files from photos. I'm gonna try it out on my pen plotter. Finally, I swore to myself I'd stop it with the NES Classic Pi projects, but there's a great new 3D printed case design out there by JJ Designs. I figure now that Nintendo is phasing out production, people will be looking for DIY options again. Maker fairs, there are so many maker fairs this weekend, it's insane. You've got Meridian, Mississippi, Barnstable, Massachusetts, Santa Domingo in the Dominican Republic, Tyler, Texas, Columbia, South Carolina, Santa Cruz, California, Ozicek, Croatia, Lansing, Michigan, Mannheim, Germany, Salzburg, Austria, and Ithaca, New York. Also, fan of the show, Mike Rodriguez, home gamer engineer on YouTube, sent me photos and video of his time at last week's Maker Faire in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. Looks like he had a good time, And if any of you are heading to one of those Maker Fairs this weekend, send me some photos of your time there or some highlights of the show, and I'll include them next week. All right? I'm Donald at MakerProjectLab.com. And that's it for this week's show. And by the time you're seeing this, I probably will have surpassed the 5,000 subscriber mark on YouTube, which is incredible, for me at least. It feels really good. And thank you, all of you, for letting me into your lives for this weekly show. It feels really great to know that I have an audience of people who share the same weird maker passion that I do, all right? So that's it. Uh, Again, if you have any money to contribute to my Maker Fair Power Wheels project, that would be really good if you could send a few bucks my way. There's some cool perks there worth checking out too. That's it, really. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.